like and subscribe might be a simple click for you but it will lead to a transformational change of our channel. Support us to achieve 5 million subscribers by year 2028. In the vast ocean, a woman's body plummets into the water, floating momentarily before her eyes snap open in terror. Suddenly, Brandon jolts awake, realizing it was just a nightmare. He serves as a bodyguard for the governor's daughter, Ava, and has been grappling with deep-seated guilt since failing to protect her mother. Brandon and Ava arrive at the airport, where Ava reunites with her friends, Jed and Kyle. They are embarking on a trip together, and the boys are displeased that Brandon is joining them, but Ava explains that her father wouldn't have allowed her to come without security. Once on the plane, Ava and the guys sit at the back for some privacy, and Ava finds it odd that there are so few passengers. Shortly after takeoff, the plane experiences minor turbulence, which is deemed normal. Moments later, the plane shakes again, and the engine appears to be overheating. The pilot informs the passengers that they inadvertently struck some birds and assures them there's no cause for concern. However, soon the plane shakes once more, and an engine catches fire. At that moment, the pilot instructs everyone to fasten their seatbelts. As panic sets in, a part of the engine breaks off and hits the side of the plane, killing a passenger. The resulting crack causes a pressure change, and everything inside the plane starts flying or shaking, with bags falling and hitting people on the head. Passengers who didn't fasten their seatbelts are thrown from their seats, even when trying to hold onto others. In mere seconds, a section of the wall blows out, creating a gaping hole that causes many people to be sucked out to their deaths. Brandon attempts to grab a floating man, but the wind is too strong, and the man is swept away. Another passenger tries to hold onto the seats, but the metal can't withstand the strain, and the seats, with the man still on them, fall off. A flight attendant attempts to assist another passenger, only to fall with him. After losing most of its passengers, the plane plummets at high speed and crashes into the ocean, where water quickly begins to flood it. Brandon is impaled by a piece of metal, and the seats are propelled forward by the impact, crushing many passengers. The plane sinks for a few minutes before coming to a halt when it gets lodged on the seabed. Due to the plane being stuck at an angle, an air pocket forms at the back, allowing Ava, her friends, and flight attendant Danilo to survive. However, Kyle suffers a broken arm. The group listens anxiously to the strange noises coming from the water. Suddenly, Brandon emerges, bringing Rosa and her grandmother Marty to safety. Marty is unconscious, so Danilo performs chest compressions, and after several tense minutes, Marty regains consciousness. Rosa inquires about her grandfather, and Brandon regretfully informs her and Marty that he did not survive. The group begins to panic, so Brandon swiftly assumes leadership to calm them. The air pocket means they are safe for now, so they need to remain calm and wait for rescuers. Ava checks her phone, but there is no signal underwater. She points out that there's a hole in the plane and suggests they should swim out, but Brandon explains their chances of survival that way are slim, so they must stay and wait. Danilo informs them that the pilots likely called for help before the crash, so assistance should arrive soon. Brandon adds that they should have backup oxygen, just in case. Danilo mentions that the plane has two emergency tanks in the back, but when he checks, he finds them empty. At that moment, Marty recalls that one of the passengers had a medical oxygen tank, so Brandon volunteers to dive in to find it. Before he leaves, Marty asks him to bring her husband's hat. Brandon dives in and swims through the corridor, checking on the passengers who died in their seats. He finds the hat and takes it, not noticing something swimming by the window. He then locates the oxygen tank and grabs it. Checking the hole, he decides to swim further in search of anything else useful, and to his shock, he is suddenly attacked by a shark that enters through the hole. The creature immediately bites Brandon, and he struggles against it, trying his best to fend it off. Meanwhile, the group becomes worried as they see ripples in the water indicating something is happening. Suddenly, the ripples vanish, and Brandon resurfaces, telling the others to stay back while revealing severe wounds on his body. Breathing heavily, he hands them the oxygen tank and the hat before apologizing to Ava. Then he is dragged back into the water, and the group watches in horror as the shark's tail peeks out while the creature devours Brandon. Terrified, the group retreats to hide in the employee's area and agrees to continue waiting as Brandon suggested. Marty offers to take care of Kyle's arm, explaining she was a nurse during wartime, which is how she met her husband. Kyle screams in pain as Marty pushes the bone back into place, and using thick magazines and bandages, she improvises a splint. Outside, a helicopter flies near the area searching for the fallen plane. They have priority orders because they know the governor's daughter is among the victims, but for now, they don't see anything. Back with the survivors, they hear creaking and the plane shifts for a few seconds, indicating it might fall again at any moment. Jed begins to get too negative, and Danilo opens the oxygen tank Brandon retrieved. 
At that moment, they see the water turning red and realize the sharks have come inside to eat the drowned bodies. Suddenly, the plane shakes a bit, and they see sharks swimming by the window, hitting random plane parts as they move. Rosa becomes too scared, and Ava reassures her, saying she's confident they'll be rescued. However, the helicopter still hasn't found anything and is running low on fuel. The group keeps track of the water level and estimates they have about 3 or 4 hours before the water reaches the back. However, they also hear the metal creaking and notice some water leaking through the ceiling, so they can't be sure if the plane will hold up that long. Suddenly, the plane starts sliding down for several minutes, causing a bunch of rocks to fall off until it gets stuck again. Thankfully, the group holds on and no one gets hurt, but this new angle causes the water level inside the plane to rise faster. Since the seabed isn't as stable as they thought, the group agrees they have no choice but to swim out of the plane. They'll need to find a way to distract the sharks, and Rosa mentions she learned in school that sharks don't like bubbles. There's still the problem of holding their breath for that long, and Kyle suddenly remembers that some passengers were traveling with scuba equipment. Danilo explains that those items are in the baggage hold and there's a hatch that would give them access, however, the oxygen tanks are probably empty, otherwise, they wouldn't have been allowed on the plane. Ava thinks the rest of the scuba equipment could still be useful, but Jed is too pessimistic. Ava pretends she needs to use the bathroom and hides there, having a breakdown as she hears the plane creak. When she comes out, Ava reassures Rosa that it's okay to be frightened. Outside, the helicopter has only 15 minutes of fuel left. At that moment, they finally find plane parts floating around, so two divers jump into the water to start the search. It doesn't take long for them to find the plane, and as soon as they get closer, the group starts signaling from the window. One diver swims toward the hole while the other approaches the window to tell the survivors it's all fine now. Suddenly, a shark appears behind him, unnoticed. The group tries to warn him, but he finds nothing when he turns around. As he looks at the plane again, he's pulled down and killed by the shark. Hearing lots of noises above, the group looks out the window and sees the diver's leg floating away. Remembering the other diver, the survivors check the corridor, but no one shows up, so they assume he's also dead. Outside, the helicopter is nearly out of fuel and has no choice but to leave. At least they have the coordinates, and backup is already on its way. Back with the survivors, Ava suggests they could take the dead diver's oxygen tank. She looks underwater and notices a shadow, but can't be sure what it is. Jed tries to get a closer look by standing on the seats, only to slip and fall into the water. The group panics because they can't see him, but he surfaces laughing, having pranked them. However, he doesn't get out in time, and the shark soon catches him in its jaws. As Jed struggles against the shark, the group pulls him to safety, managing to drag him away from the shark. Unfortunately, they discover that Jed is missing a leg. Marty makes Rosa stand behind a curtain while she tends to the wound, using seatbelts to make a tourniquet to stop the bleeding. Jed cries when he realizes he won't be able to participate in triathlons anymore. Still determined to get out of there, Ava volunteers to search for the scuba equipment. Danilo opens the hatch, revealing that the baggage hold is also flooded, but Ava dives in anyway. Using a flare, she looks around the area, unaware of something else swimming behind the bags. Eventually, she finds the scuba equipment, only to be startled by an octopus as the flare goes out. The others begin to worry when they see no more light, but soon Ava returns with the equipment. The group opens the bags to find diving suits and masks, but there are only four. Suddenly, they hear something hitting the plane and rush to check the window, but see no diver around, concluding it must be a shark. When they turn back, they find Jed has passed away. A desperate Ava tries to perform chest compressions, but Marty pulls her back, making her see the reality. The plane slides down again, stopping quickly as the cockpit breaks and acts as an anchor. With water rising faster, they need to escape quickly. Remembering Rose's fact about sharks, they plan to use the small oxygen canisters from the emergency masks to blow bubbles and scare the sharks away. Kyle breaks down, confessing a childhood accident left him traumatized and a poor swimmer. With Ava and Rose's encouragement, he agrees to try. Ava gathers all the oxygen masks she can without going too deep into the water. The sharks continue hitting the plane, causing the ceiling to crack. The group starts changing into the diving suits, and Marty volunteers to go without a suit, believing she would only slow them down. After a final goodbye to Jed, the survivors enter the water, noting the plane is starting to slide down again. Suddenly, the cockpit breaks and falls into the abyss, signaling the plane will soon follow. Marty asks Ava to go first and take Rosa with her. The girls start swimming through the corridor, encountering a shark blocking their way. They open an oxygen canister, scaring it away and clearing their path. Soon, Kyle and Danilo join them. Marty watches the young ones go as the water rises inside the plane, knowing she won't make it. She stays back, waiting to be reunited with her husband. Kyle panics and swims back to the small pocket of air left. 
Danilo tries to go back for him, but a shark emerges from the baggage hold and attacks Kyle, devouring him. Terrified, Danilo swims to meet Rosa and Ava, who find the dead diver and take his tank to fill their lungs. Ava sends Rosa and Danilo through the hole with the tank, but when she tries to leave, a shark blocks her way. Ava swims back and freezes, allowing the shark to swim inside without noticing her, though its tail knocks off her mask. Seeing more sharks coming through the hole, she swims toward the front. As the plane starts falling faster, the water pressure hinders her movement, but she holds onto the seats and pushes through, managing to escape through the front hole right before the plane plunges into the abyss. Ava begins swimming to the surface but soon runs out of air and passes out. Her body, supported by floaties, rises to the surface. She breathes as soon as she reaches the surface, waking up immediately. Panicked, she doesn't see the others, but helicopters arrive and rescue her. Danilo and Rosa have already been saved. When Rosa asks about her grandmother, Ava breaks the sad news. As a final goodbye to her grandparents, Rosa throws her beloved plushie into the water before falling asleep in Ava's arms. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button so that you don't miss any of our video updates.